Coming up, the South Regional Semifinal between Syracuse and top-seeded Duke. Jim Nansen, Billy Packer will have the call. And for those of you expecting Stanford against Purdue, we'll get you to that tip at 7.55. Meanwhile, enjoy the games, everyone, here on C. Later, UCLA and Kentucky, the two programs with the most championships in NCAA history. We'll tangle here. And welcome, everyone. Jim and Billy with you. Great to have you here. Billy, what about this first matchup tonight? Jim, a solid zone team against a great perimeter shooting team. The zone will give the shots. Can Duke make them? That's going to be the story of this game. The lineup, Syracuse has had the same starting five all season, 26 and 8. The Orangemen, Duke with two seniors, McLeod and Wojciechowski, 31 and 3. Well, these teams got off the great starts this year. Duke 20 and 1 at one point. Syracuse 13 and 0, and they're right here. A pivotal matchup. Duke in the white uniform, Syracuse controls. Syracuse advancing to the regional with a last second win over Iona. And then a defensive gym and a victory against New Mexico. Straight man-to-man -man matchup for Duke as expected. And boy, they match up almost perfectly in both size, speed, and assignments. Thomas and Brand in there almost look like twin brothers. Hart with three on the shot clock. It's tipped back outside, and Blackwell saves it. Syracuse will restart. In the lane they go. Thomas misses the dunk. And Langdon has it for the Duke Blue Devils. Winners over Radford and Oklahoma State the first two rounds. And there we see the 2-3 matching up zone. Push off on McLeod, who has been extremely hot in this tournament. And gets the roll for the game's first points. Rashawn McLeod, the leading scorer for the Blue Devils. Last three games, 24 against North Carolina, 23 Radford, and 22 Oklahoma State. Playing as well as anybody in the NCAA tournament. Yanulis. Comes up short, and the freshman Brand pulls it down for Duke. Key guy will be Langdon early in the game with his jump shot, Jim, and there it goes. Langdon, his firing on the first three. Duke underneath, tipped around, though, to Syracuse. Todd Bergen, senior leader of this team. Jim Langdon, if he's getting, given those shots on the wing, normally a terrific shooter. Well, yeah, stepped on the line. Duke forces the turnover. Excellent hedge move by McLeod, moving out on Hart. If you're going to set that solid screen that far out, it's got to be a little pick and roll action to get the big man down there on Wojo early. McLeod with position in the lane, kicks it back out. Wojo will take the open three. And McLeod tipped it out of bounds. Right. Only the third time Duke has merited a number one seed in the tournament. That's kind of surprising. It really is, Jim, really shocking. And the last time, or let's say the first time these two teams met, I think they've only met three times in their storied history, but 1966, Jimmy Bayheim and Dave Bing went up against Duke in the NCAA tournament regional final for Duke to win and move on to the final four. Yanulis with the three, and Syracuse gets on the board. Two minutes, 20 seconds into the game. Quick release by Yanulis. McLeod goes with the left hand. Brand follows for two. Now, anytime you see somebody playing against his own defense, Jim, the normal thing, and I think this is what Syracuse sometimes mystifies teams with, they want to go right outside and shoot over the top of it. Duke doing the wise thing, getting that ball down inside the zone. Blackwell. Off the glass. The Illinois transfer returned back to his home state of New York. Has really been a great addition to Jim Beheim's team. There it is, back down inside again. Good interior passing, and Brand scores. He'll head to the line for one. Now, one of the things that also, when you go up against the 2-3 zone, you can see what Duke is doing. They're attacking right down the center, the middle of the zone, feeding from the top right down into the center where there is an open area. Number 42, Elton Brand. On the so the first on Blackwell. And Brand, who started the first 11 games, then suffered that foot injury. 
came back to this is his sixth start since the return langdon three and that's a five-point trip for the blue devils and you can imagine how happy Mike Krzyzewski is to see Langdon start hitting him. He's a terrific shooter. Great block by McLeod. Bergen rejected. McLeod three. In and out. Pretty solid rim there. Bergen pull up three. Slides off the rim. Carrollwell retrieves. McLeod down here, so it's really, Carroll's got to realize it's it's five on four right here, and they got to wait for McLeod. Good job by Wojo. Boy, Brand really setting up a good target down in low. McLeod missing again from behind the arc. I'm surprised Duke doesn't continually pound down into Brand. It really is available. Letting them play early, only one whistle so far, and that jumper in and out by Blackwell. McLeod's exhausted here early in the ballgame, Jim, not getting down court. Brand saves it out to Carrowell. Sometimes you hyperventilate early in a ball game, and McLeod is a guy that's really tired. He needs a little blow. Elton Brand with four points, four rebounds. Our first whistle finds Duke in front, 9-5. to five. South semifinal, then later tonight, UCLA and Kentucky, and... Look in the 90s at the four programs gathering here in St. Petersburg and look at what they've achieved. Nine Final Fours in this decade, eight title game appearances, four championships. Overall in the history of their program, 40 Final Fours by these four and 19 championships. Jim, massive uh, substitutions by, uh, from Syracuse standpoint. Now, how about Avery? An unconscious freshman. It doesn't mind coming in off that bench and throwing up a bomb from about four steps beyond the three-point line. Avery, one of three freshmen inserted into the lineup for Duke. Battier and Burgess, the other two. We talk about the difference in these two teams. Syracuse has four guys that play between 32 and 36 minutes. Trajan Langan at 28 is the most minutes anybody plays for Duke. Yeah. And picked up by Avery. Somebody's got to come up. back to help. Good job by Blackwell. In and the ball belongs to Duke. Some of you will be branching off here in just a few moments. Stanford and Purdue about to get started out in St. Louis. We'll get you there for the start of that game in the Midwest. Jim, that was a very smart play by Blackwell. He realized everybody had left Avery and came over to double team there. Really on the ball. Carowell with a three. Way too strong. Battier gets it inside and banks it home. Shane Battier. Shane Duke really controlling the offensive glass. Brand had a put back earlier. Duke on a 9-0 run. They get 10-0. Battier, one of the top defensive newcomers in college basketball out here on Bergen. And Hart with the three. Breaks the skid. Three point number five, Jason Hart. Carowell, Duke got the blocky there. And a whistle against the Devils. Called against Carrollwell. Jimmy Beheim, Billy, you said it, his final game as a player at Syracuse. Finished just one game shy of making it to the Final Four. He was co-captain with Dave Bing, and they were knocked out in that tournament in 66 by Duke in the East Regional Final. And you know what it set up? Duke against Kentucky. Battle in uh, College Park, Maryland. A possible regional final here on Sunday. Adolph Rupp going up against Vic Bubis, one of the real clashes. And neither team came away with a national championship. Texas Western at one of all. Machina has come in for Syracuse. Bounces it over to Griffin. Good move by Griffin on the backdoor cut. Young man who's been kind of quiet, but had a big game in the Big East tournament against Villanova. Avery got him with the arm. Billy, it's, it's really very rare these days when you look at the end of the season and find a squad that has started the same five all 35 games. That's the case with Syracuse this year. Well, one of the good things about that, if you play that many minutes and start that much, two things. One, you get your confidence to be able to play a lot of minutes, and two, you know how to stay out of foul trouble. And the Possible three-point play here for Blackwell. And Jim, the zone helps that a lot. There's a team that, uh, that that's smart. They play the zone. 
in the zone. They don't have to aggressively go out and press, so they are able to play more minutes. And when you get in the NCAA tournament, if you have a short bench, as long as you're healthy, that uh, doesn't seem to hurt you that much. Duke is now down to eight players. That was not a basket by Blackwell. Went through the net, yeah. so he almost two. <laughs> well, they don't count if they go from the bottom up. Number four. Blocked for a moment from you, and I saw it just coming down to the bottom. <laughs> no wonder I had the game all wrong back at Marble High School. Yeah, right. No, they must go from the top 10 foot down through the bottom. <laughs> Blackwell. One of two. Avery tries another three. Capella a good rebound. Yeah, he came flying through the lane, keep it alive for Duke. See, without Brand, they're not getting as big a target down in the center of that zone as they got with Brand in the game. The foul, back out. Chappelle will take the three. Right off the bench, Mike Chappelle. Three-point basket number 20, Mike Chappelle. I'm Greg Gumbel in New York. Those of you waiting for Stanford against Purdue, wait no more. Your time has come. We'll keep you updated on what happens in St. Petersburg, but right now we'll send you to St. Louis. They the can't create their own shot, Tim. Back at Syracuse, Duke up by six. The Syracuse cheerleader who was hurt was a cheerleader who's in her first year, sophomore Lisa Hackett. She got a cut over her left eye. She maintained three stitches over that eye, and they have taken her to a local hospital simply as a precaution. They tell me she's okay. Back to you guys. Oh, excellent news. Thank you, Michelle. And that flips right through the fingers of Carowell. Trajan Langdon having all kinds of problems tonight. In this game, Duke's bench outscoring the Syracuse bench. 13 to nothing. Jim, there's a play. The rules allow you to throw the ball into the backcourt. There was no problem whatsoever. Langdon making a proper pass there to get the ball to Carowell. Just threw it away. Hart pass Langdon. Yeah. Down to four. Great hesitation dribble by Hart. Left-hander. 11, Billy. Left-hander uses that dribble very well. McLeod steps yeah. and give Thomas a lot of credit defensively. Jim, one of the things that normally happens against a team that plays zone, and this is why Syracuse is so effective, normally it takes the offense to find the holes in the defense. Syrac Duke found them early, but then Syracuse adjusted to those holes and really going to force Duke to make some adjustments now. And Duke's turned it over four times in the last couple of minutes where they've gone dry from the field. Syracuse, meanwhile, has hit its last four on an eight-nothing run. And they've really done it without their leading guy, Todd Bergen. Good oh, save, Bergen, Bergen turned his head. Turn. Yep, could have maybe gotten that one. Brand coming down the lane. He lost control, it's still got it back. Duke was really lucky there. Carowell oh, makes a decision to give the ball back to Brand, who's gonna serve as a point guard on a fast break. Griffin penetrating. Good move. Young man from New York City. Putting on a great two-man show with Hart. 30-26 Duke. Wojo. Yes. Oh, that was an afterthought, wasn't it? Oh, right. It was an afterthought, but it sure was a swish. Wants him to respect that possible three-point shot. Carowell, boy, he is, he has been aggressive. And actually, I think that Carowell up the top against a 2-3 zone because of his size probably finds passing angles better than Wojo does. The minute 45 to go first half. Duke has come back with a five-point run. And that breaks that. Now Blackwell and Hart going right by Duke people. Nobody from the weak side helping out. Yeah. 
Gene yeah. McLeod has got the gym immediately delivered. When he gets the ball inside, he puts it on the floor, and that costs him. In the new lineup, number 31. Well, field goal percentage is about the same. Bergen only one of five from the field. Three points. He had 20 points, 10 rebounds against New Mexico. Well, Jim, when you look at it, Duke way off their normal shooting percentage. Syracuse right about on theirs. There's that double team again. Tough break for Syracuse. It was a good defensive play. Ball just got loose. Right in the arms of Brand. A minute to go. Back to a nine-point ball. One minute. One. Achina. He likes to shoot the three. The There's the same. Well, well, gets the loose ball. <laughs> well, good break for Syracuse that time and a tough break on the other end. But Oshina loves to shoot the three. He just doesn't make many of them, Jim. Langdon. And Griffin in there battling. And that's going to be a foul on Yanulis. Coming up on Penn's Oil at the half, Greg Clark and Coach Smith will get you updated on all the tournament news, scores, and highlights, and a live look at the action in St. Louis. Coming up on Penn's Oil at the half. Second on your newest, Brand to the bench. Brand, an incredible story. Missed 15 games this year with that uh, broken foot situation. Everybody anticipated he'd be out for the year. It's a one and one. But he came back. Uh, Great medical attention and a kid that uh, knows how to get himself healthy in a hurry. One of only nine freshmen to ever start the first game under Coach K. Battier was also one of the nine. They had the two freshmen in the lineup against Army in the opener. It all started back with Johnny Dawkins and Mark Allen. Look at the putback by Battier. Little half hook. Finding a lot of loose balls on the inside for easy baskets. 40-30, 25 seconds remaining. Bergen probably wants to go ahead and take this. Here we go, so under 10. Little 1-4 action. Is he going to get any help? Carroll well defending. Bergen wanted the challenge. Leans in, shot way off the mark. And Duke goes to the locker room with a 10-point lead. Syracuse had tripped at the four. Duke with nine players scoring in the first half, leading it 40 to 30. And CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Men's Basketball Championship will continue after this message and a word from your local station. Sponsored by Pennzoil. Actually formulated for today's stop and go driving. Stop, go, Pennzoil. Welcome once again to Pennzoil at the half, everyone. Along with Dean Smith and Clark Kellogg, I'm Greg Gumbel at halftime. Stanford leading Purdue by 37-26 score. Coach, what is Gene Cady saying to his Boilermakers, and at what level is he saying it? I can't repeat that, but I think you'll see a different, more aggressive Purdue team coming back. Stanford's been sensational defensively, and Purdue probably will be the second half. You just can't get waxed on the boards the way Purdue is and expect to win the game. It has been buffet style all first <laughs> half for Stanford. That means plenty of second shot opportunities, and Jaron Collins came in off the bench and gave him a huge lift. And Stanford is out rebounding the Boilermakers 29 to 11 at halftime. Meanwhile, in the other game in progress in St. Petersburg, the top seed Duke leading Syracuse 40 to 33. They're just underway in the second half. Let's take you out there live and join Jim Nansen, Billy Packer. Duke has not scored here in the second half. Blue Devils led 40 to 30 at halftime. But a foul on the inside. Bergen of Syracuse is second. And Rashawn McLeod, the Duke top scorer on the season, to the line for two. He has struggled here tonight. Only two of eight from the field in the first half. Jim, as I said, uh, he is struggling, and a guy who hasn't been struggling of late, he has been tremendous since the Christmas break. Remember after the Michigan game in which he did not play well, he went home at Christmas time, really dejected and down, but has come back and has played extremely well. All-conference player, all-ACC tournament player. They lost that game at Michigan in December, and McLeod start, started the very next game, has started every game since. And matter of fact, uh, was elevated to try captain in February as a compliment by his teammates the way he's played. 
Bush on the outside. That was quite a gesture. They had a team meeting and decided to add another captain. The team voted for him. Wojciechowski, by the way, with his third foul. Later here, UCLA and Kentucky. Wojo's having all kinds of problems with Hart. In fact, Hart probably doing as good a job with ball penetration against Wojo as any player I've seen the last couple of years. Freshman William Avery, though, shined in the first half. Over the top, over Brand they go. Thomas blocked by Brand. Wow. Thomas had to fight off the weak side defensive help, and Brand was waiting for him on the put-up. You'll see the ball goes inside. Brand does a good job sealing him. Then he sees the weak side help. There's the block. Hart, who has 13 to lead the way for Syracuse. 15 on the shot clock. Todd Bergen put on the line. That's a two. Beautiful pull up by Bergen. Top man for the Orange with five points tonight. So it's not his best performance so far. Avery, long range three. That's how he started when he came into the game. Put up the three, four or five feet beyond the three-point line. First field goal, and it's a three of the second half for Duke. Blue Devils led by as many as 12 in the first half at 28 to 16. Syracuse chopped into that lead, trimmed it to four before a little burst by Duke before the half made it 40-30 at halftime. Jim, notice what a great job Syracuse does in getting back down court so that Duke can't get advantage of any of the fast break opportunities. Syracuse personal number 33, Tom Thomas. Tom Thomas with his second. What kind of game has this been to this point, Billy? Well, I think that Syracuse's defense has been very effective taking away from Duke what they'd like to do, and that is the, to get Trajan Langdon off with his outside shots and McLeod scoring. And I think Duke, uh, with, their, with their bench, has been as extremely effective. Very seldom do you see a team with a nice working margin like Duke has and not have their key scorers really involved in the game. Jimmy Beheim doing a nice substitution job, realizing he can't play those five starters 35 or six minutes in this game. McLeod, first 57 games of his career, played for St. John's before he transferred to Duke. One of two. So just under 17 minutes to play in the second half, and Duke with a 10-point lead. We'll keep you updated on that score throughout the evening. We want to remind you, coming up next in the second half of our regional semifinal doubleheader, Tubby Smith and his Kentucky Wildcats meet Steve Lavin and the UCLA Bruins in the South, while in the Midwest, a couple of Cinderella's, 13-seed Valparaiso, 8-seed Rhode Island. It's up next here on CBS. In UCLA's second-round game against Michigan, the Bruins came away with the win, but not before losing the circle to the Final Four continues. Pennzoil at the half has been sponsored by Pennzoil, specially formulated for today's stop and go driving. Stop, go, Pennzoil. 39 Duke as we check the Microsoft data bank. Only two number five seeds have won a regional semifinal game, a Sweet 16 game, since they went to 64 teams back in 85. Mississippi State, which went on to the final fourth, the Meadowlands, and Virginia back in 89. Virginia lost in that regional final to Michigan. You know, Jim, it's interesting you see the uh, team. Here's a little first-time half-court trap out of the 2-3. Langdon, wraparound pass to Battier. Tough call on Bergen. Good job by Trajan Langdon to recognize the 2-3 trap. Nice job by Jimmy Beheim on that timeout. Three on Bergen, three on Yanulis, who's sitting right now. So Battier to the... Line for two. All freshman player from the ACC this year. Out of Birmingham, Michigan. Country Day High School. Chris Weber's high school. Set a record, Jim. Kind of interesting. In charges taken this year. Uh, new record for Duke University. Unusual for a six foot nine inch freshman to set a record for charges taken. Show how intense he is defensively. Also very active on the offensive glass. Probably Duke's best rebounder on the offensive end. Oh, that was a and was 
Was he held? No call against Chappelle. Well, Chappelle really did a pretty good job with his body there. I didn't see him grab any shirt. Bergen just couldn't get around him. The backdoor cut was there, although the angle wasn't best for the pass. Avery kicks it back out. Langdon three. Brand just controlling the inside. Gets another chance. Oh, nope. good steal. That's a quick hand to Griffin. And the foul call against Battier of Duke. Jim, Trajan Langdon is thinking in this basketball game instead of just playing the game. You notice he was standing out there, not expecting the shot. He's now one for eight. He just has to get consumed into the game. Very unusual to see a guy of his ability get caught up mentally in a basketball game where he's not letting things go instinctively. Griffin misses the short one. Inside, Blackwell draws the action. This could be... It is again on Battier, back-to-back -back fouls at both ends, so he's got three now. UCLA, Kentucky coming up later here, and Valparaiso against Rhode Island in St. Louis. UCLA uh, just shorthanded and undermanned again, and that whole situation just inflamed yesterday when Rico Hines, it was revealed, sliced his hand trying to butter a roll. Well, I'll give you a little hit when Baron Davis told me yesterday. Look for a man by the name of Knight to step up. Is it possible that Steve Lavin can get a bench that was really short in the first place to come in and play against a team like Kentucky in a big game like this? Billy Crazier Knight. things have happened. Yeah. Billy Knight. In the NCAA tournament, about. yes. Billy Knight, the freshman. 47-42. So that's the tip from one of the players. We'll see how it plays out. Baron Davis says he's going to be in a uniform tonight. He's not going to play, but he's going to be in a uniform. Put him to the line for a three-point possibility. Boy, Griffin was right down there with him. It shows you how strong. Now, here's Griffin getting in the Duke huddle. That reminds me of the shenanigans, Jim. Duke, Carolina. We'll see the play down on the inside here. Brand with that great touch, and he's so strong. But Duke, Carolina. Somebody from Duke steals Michael Jordan's jersey. Right away, Grant Hill's jersey's gone. Mike Krzyzewski has a framed picture gone. What happens is they find out that the Duke students had that Michael Jordan jersey and had planned to drop it during the Duke Carolina game at Duke. They were caught, so the jersey has now been returned. They'd never give up over there going against each other. There is still, though, a missing item. Is oh, great. Still one item missing, though, Billy. White item is Grant Hill's uh, jersey is still missing. It'll show. Bounce it inside the brand. Little fade away. In and out. And active hands with Blackwell. Here comes Syracuse. Chance to trim it to four. Excellent feed. Bergen filling the lane. Blackwell doing a good job on the glass defensively. Mike Krzyzewski has to know where to turn. And he's going to try to turn to Trajan Langdon. Does he have anything? A quick burst by Todd Bergen. Hart just laid it up for him. Perfect alley-oop. Look at how soft that is, Jim. Bergen with 11 in the second half. Jim, look at the rotation on this ball. You see how soft that one up there? Hardly any rotation at all. Just a perfect pass. Look at the seams. I mean, yeah, you couldn't right. put it in a guy's hands any better than that. Exactly. Got the NCAA uh, <laughs> logo, <on> logo <laughs> emblazoned right there, right between his hands. Well, normally, a ball that's coming off hard has got a lot of spin to it. That ball went up there just perfectly floating, easy to catch and put away. Hard to do on the dribble. Hart's having a fine game. Wojo in now at the point. I think that Trajan Langdon's going to have to hit a jump shot here to gain some confidence. And it's a key that might put him back in the game at this pivotal spot. Stepping in, now stuck back outside, under 10 on the shot. Carowell with the head fake drive. Good Battle push out. Griffin Bergen with the board. Good job by Griffin to push McLeod out of the way. Griffin lost control of it in the lane. And Syracuse ball off Wojohowski. Well, you know Wojo will die for a loose ball. Blackwell doing a good job. You know, Blackwell this year, eight double-doubles. He's got games like 16 rebounds against Villanova. Winner at the buzzer beat St. John's in the Big number East Tournament. This fella has really had an outstanding year. And Bergen has come alive with his jump shot. Scored nine of the last ten. 
touch. And a little touch foul on McLeod. His second. Pizza Hut salutes the academic all-stars from Syracuse. Marius Yanoulis, who has a 3.84 GPA with a double major, computer science and economics. And Taman Domzalski from Duke, who has a 3.49 GPA, majoring in history. Akina in the bonus already, so he hits the front end of a one-on-one. -on -one. There's Jim Beheim's wife, Julie. Oh, he said Akina having problems from three if he steps in a little bit. Looks like he's more comfortable. Can bring it to two. 49-46 Duke. And here's where that jump shot gets tough against the zone defense. You start to tighten up a little bit. McLeod detected by Alcina. McLeod still wanting to put the ball on the floor inside the zone. Finds himself with no place to go. Duke only 2 of 12 from the field in the second half. This is the kind of defensive performance that we saw last week when Syracuse put the clamps on New Mexico. Here's Langdon. Impossible shot. Yeah, really forced it off balance. And a hole called on McLeod. Oh, Blackwell did a great job. First of all, he held McLeod. McLeod retaliated. Blackwell too strong for him. Third on McLeod. Back to the other end for a one-on-one. Trajan Langan took that jump shot. It really wasn't there, Jim. Not his kind of shot. We'll see the retaliation. There is McLeod, Blackwell pushing both ways. McLeod gets called. First time we've seen a Mr. Blackwell get undressed. <laughs> and he'll head to the line for a one-on-one. Blackwell, two NCAA tournament games, eight points, ten rebounds in both against Iona and New Mexico. It's a big one. They'll shoot one more. Down to two. Remember, they were down 12 in the first half. Ten at halftime. Tip the tap. Cheetah Second time. All tied at 49. And remember the big block he just made inside of McLeod, so he's really coming through. He's playing the center of the 2-3 zone, doing a nice job there as well. Keeping an eye on Brand in that area. And here's where that perimeter shot becomes so tough, and not what you want from a freshman. you got to get the ball down inside if you're Duke. Avery had hit that a couple of times, but not with this Syracuse rally now. Doesn't fall for him. Syracuse can take the lead. The last lead for the Orange was 5-4. Oh, where's that going? Almost hit the shot clock. Oh, right back yeah. comes Syracuse. Griffin with a terrific steal. Wojo looking around. Classic charge. Langdon held his position. It's the second on Hart. But Wojo, Jim, really had the numbers and should have been able to go ahead and make something work on that break. Ball hits long, comes off. Ochina, left hand, then right hand, and put... Thomas, just a sophomore, did a good job against Kenny Thomas of New Mexico, holding him four for 16, 12 points, 12 rebounds. And see if Syracuse picks up full court again. Trapping, Blackwell, Bergen, and Hart. Tough target there. Griffin steals it. Backcourt violation. Nope, Bergen's foot on the line. I tell you, that is a very interesting pressing team with Blackwell, Bergen, Hart, all with good size out there, good wingspans. Tough to bring the ball up against them. You have to throw over the top of that press. 10-point Duke lead, 6.20 remaining. Carrowell up high with a jumper. He loves that gliding in shot. We saw it last night. Miles Simon, who probably has that down to a science better than any college player I've seen in a long time. It's that glider. Griffin, this is the layup. Loose ball. Great day. Yeah. Tips it to Carrowell. Here comes Griffin. Carrowell banks it home. Oh, how about that smart play by Battier? He realized he had a man ahead. 
Boy, this kid plays smart. And Duke has just blown it open. 66-52. Syracuse has not hit a field goal now in almost seven minutes. And you don't want to take that shot trying to come back. Well, it's been the freshman, Jim. When they were recruited, everybody said the top recruiting class in the country. And they have certainly produced here tonight. And they produced when the game had been tied at 49. And you see what's happening now. Syracuse having to go to man-to-man. -to -man. This is not what they do well. I'm surprised that the Mike won't come back with Wojo against this man-to-man. -man. Avery to Brand. So strong. And the freshmen for Duke have 39 of their 68 points tonight. How about that? Well, Jimmy Beheim's seen enough of that freshman class. He's going for a timeout. They haven't said if it's a 20. It's a full timeout for Syracuse. Syracuse without a field goal for seven and a half minutes from a tie game at 49 to down 16. His biggest asset is his strength and his mobility down low. Here's the trap. They're trying to turn to get a run going. Cardinals are, are protecting the ball and not turning it over. Now with this nine-point lead, Al, and better than ten minutes to play, McDonald on the floor, Mendez, Seaton, guys off of the Stanford bench, allowing Young and Madsen and uh, Arthur Lee an opportunity to get a blow, to be fresh for the stretch run, and McDonald is hacked as he penetrates into the paint. Near the conclusion of every NCAA tournament game, we'll select a genuine Chevrolet most valuable player of the game from each team. Today, Chevrolet has contributed over $6.5 million to the scholarship funds of America's colleges and universities. That was a bad foul that time by Alan Eldridge. The, uh, the clock was ticking down. Now you see some of the major contributors in this game on the bench. Miller, though, not for long. He'll check in. Right now, he will spell Jerron Cornell. The whole difference in this game was the last five minutes of the first half where Stanford made that huge run. And again, it was uh, Jerry Collins doing large parts of that. When Young left and Collins entered to join forces with Madsen, they dominated on the offensive glass. This lead equaling the largest of the game for Stanford. At 11. Tough pass. Cardinal corrals it for Purdue. Should be automatically two. Count it and a foul. No double team that time on the entry. On the seal on, uh, uh, on below, it's automatic. There are two fellas out there now for Stanford, Collins and I. Who's number 44 out there? I can't get his name. <laughs> it's... um. Mark Seaton. 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 He, just, he just doesn't have the strength to maintain it. He has another angle. On. Just feed him inside. Can't defend him. Greg Gummel and Clark Kellogg in New York. We'll keep you updated on what's happening between Syracuse and Duke. But first, we want to give you a quick look at what's going on in St. Louis, where Stanford and Purdue are doing battle. Coming up on 10 minutes to play in regulation, and Stanford has shown what you can do with a big, strong front line, Clark. Rebounding, offensive rebound, they've owned it so far. They really have big three-point shot there by Mosley, Mobley rather, Mosley. But Brian, Brad Miller's had a tough time inside. Stanford's front line, Matson and Young, have just banged them around throughout the game. And yet, the Boilermakers, who are in white in this game, have shown signs of life the last couple of minutes. Well, with over nine minutes to go, Stanford is over the limit with fouls. Purdue, an excellent free-throw shooting team. So being the team that's trailing, you'd love to be able to get points with the clock stop. That means you've got to be aggressive and strong taking it to the basket. There is some trouble looming ahead for Stanford. Both Mark Madsen and Tim Young, four fouls apiece. Madsen had 15 points with all of them coming in the first half. That is a big note, Greg. Those two guys are so physical and so important to what Stanford does. Purdue's got to knock down free throws. They might have a run in it. 9.41 to play second half. In this, the first game from St. Louis this evening. And Stanford holding a 54-43 lead on the Boilermakers. Well, Syracuse fought back from 10 down at the half to tie the game 49 apiece with 12 and a half remaining. And then Duke just went on 
a real run, all triggered by the freshman. Two of them sit down as two seniors come back in. Mike wanting a little experience here going up against the press. They've now given Bergen credit for a three a moment ago. At first, it was just a two on the board here. You can see Battier wanted to get that ball to Wojo. Nothing going. There's that double team. Syracuse, a great double teaming club. Hart with the steal. Bergen pushes it over to Blackwell. Good push off by Thomas. Thomas. Chippy can't get it to go. And Battier. Now, now, Jim, what the Duke players have to recognize is this. Syracuse is going to have five guys playing full court pressure on half of the court. What you got to do against that kind of press is to throw the ball long. So Duke would be smart even to break a man long on rebounds because Syracuse is sending five guys to the boards. They won't have that defensive balance they would normally have. So there should be an opportunity for a couple easy layups for Duke. One and one for Battier. That was the fourth on Yanubis. Freshman misfires. And Syracuse trails by 13, four minutes remaining. Still plenty of time with four minutes. Bergen can get it to 10, and does. Still plenty of time. There you have it. The trapping in the corners. Now, Duke's got to go over the top. See, they don't go over the top. The guys like Farewell and Langdon are wide open. Syracuse ball. Avery comes in for Carowell and Grant after a short break returns. Also number 42. That's McLeod. McLeod was the one who turned it over, so he sits. And a timeout called. Full timeout called by Duke. Jim, the best way to break, break this is to throw over the top. Bergen with 17 in the second half, trying to keep Syracuse alive. Uh, on the shoulder. Fred James has more, Fred. Now the chin is open, so the chin and the nose are bleeding, and this guy's beat up. And I got to tell you, Gene Cady and the coaches are over here, and they're screaming bloody murder, literally, at these referees saying, you've got to protect my guys because they're getting hammered inside. So Miller's probably going to have to go back in and re that thing. Duke is breaking out long. They have to go over the top and then get a two-on-one break inside, over the top, and get it right down inside. And you notice they don't do it. Syracuse ties them up with a triple team inside. And it was off McLeod, so Syracuse to inbound at its own end. Down 10. It was 40-30 Duke at halftime, now 70-60. And Yanulis and Bergen, two very dangerous three-point shooters on that floor. There's that double team for Bergen coming over the top. It'll be a call against Brand. His third. And you don't want to stop the clock if you're Duke to allow points on the floor. Here's the CBS Sports Line stat of the game. You can get additional tournament stats and information, in depth information, and more on cbs.sportsline.com. Well, Jim didn't, Jim Bayon didn't get points from his bench, but he got valuable minutes so his starters did not wear down. Double bonus the rest of the way for Syracuse. Griffin returns to apply some pressure. And if they can get Thomas to make this free throw, they'll get back into that full court press. Well, you can see Jimmy Beheim substituting offense and defense. He wants his quick defensive guys out there knowing the clock is going to be stopped quite a bit and get Yunulis back in the game. Gives him a chance to set up the press. Now Duke is setting up much higher now than they were before. 16-point lead is down to nine. Inbound to Langdon. Good job by Syracuse. They keep it on. Griffin almost stole it. And they got it across with a second to spare. That's all. Langdon rejected by Blackwell. Make it Thomas. Well, one of the things that Syracuse has here is the ultimate defender. Syracuse's number one shot blocker, number four in the country. That was a three-on-one break. Shows you how good Thomas is by himself. They barely got it across in time. No new 35, so under 20 on the shot clock. Brand should turn and face. You'll find Battier alone on the baseline. Avery doubled up. There's Battier. 
No call. Batio gets the short one to go. Thomas trying to draw the charge. Battier with 14 tonight. Blackwell answers at the other end. And that was against Battier. It gives you an idea of what a fine play it was. And Wojo cannot afford to pick up a dribble there. Timeout. Really surprised. The veteran player that small has to fight through the double team and keep his dribble alive. Not a good play. It's a 20-second timeout. We saw earlier tonight clips from the 91 Duke Championship. How about 92? Grant Hill as a sophomore. They topped the Fab Five in the final in Minneapolis. 71-51. Back-to-back national championships. Jim, when I look at that score, 20 points, that game was a lot closer than that. And you remember how Duke had to struggle to beat Indiana to even get in that championship. Indiana had that furious last-minute rally. Todd Leary came in and hit three threes. Remember that? You remember there was also a little controversy there by a Mr. Valentine and a Mr. Bob Knight with a technical foul in that game. You remember that one? Sounds familiar. 30 remaining in this one. There it is. Throw over the top. And right now you can see the instructions from the bench is to go ahead and occupy some time. But Duke is picking, putting the ball on the floor and then picking up dribbles, and that will really hurt you. Another timeout called. And it's a full timeout. 2.19 remaining. Duke will have 16 seconds on the shot. Regional semifinal. And Duke's used two timeouts on this possession. They've exhausted all of their timeouts. Mickey Shashevsky on that well, last possession calling for the left-hander. I guess I guess maybe Quinn uh, Snyder? No, no. Jack Marin, 1966. <laughs> oh, okay. Jack Marin was the great left-handed shooter. One of the great uh, forwards ever to play at Duke. He wanted the foul call. Now Duke must remember. Only 10 on the shot clock. Good steal by Yanulis. And from behind, Avery knocks it out of bounds. Yeah, it was 66. We talked about that. Jimmy Beheim's last game. Hart looks like he hurt his uh, shoulder there. Jack Marin had the big game against the University of Kentucky in that semifinal. Not quite enough, though, to beat Adolph Rupp's team. Hart can't lift his uh, right arm here, but he's going to stay in the game. 2.10 to go. Down nine. Good backdoor cut by Bergen. Blackwell short on the three. Thomas gets a second chance. Rejected out to Yanulis. Oh, rattles out. This looks like the Connecticut game all over again. And Avery has an uncontested layup. <laughs> Look like the Washington players last night, Jim, <laughs> that just could not get the ball tipped out. Hart. Put back Blackwell. And last touch by Langdon. Well, this becomes a game of arithmetic now. Down nine, 136 to go. You've got a, a situation where... Excuse me, down 11, four-possession game here, folks. So if you're Syracuse, you've got to go for the threes. And quickly, no time to hold the ball. Bergen in the lane. Another wild scramble, squirts out to Wojciechowski. And see what's happening, Jim. Syracuse sending five guys to the board, so Duke is going to be able to throw that ball along, get themselves some easy layups. <laughs> you know, it was amazing. You looked at the four teams in this regional, Duke, Syracuse, Kentucky, and UCLA, and the team that's been away from the Final Four the longest is Duke. <laughs> well, I would think that when you're talking about Final Fours in the 90s, Mike right? Mike seemed to be a guy that could make reservations each year for, what, five straight years he went to the Final Four. And you know, when you see Mickey up there, you think of the year that Mike had all the problems, the physical problems. And she was the one that really stepped forward and said, you know what, you're stepping aside. You're going to have complete rest. You're going to get yourself healthy. And uh, he eventually had to listen to her. So being back on that bench for all of us that love the game can credit that woman right there for taking control of the family. The Krzyzewski's parents of three daughters. And Wojo hits a bow. 
running out for Syracuse, Jim. As we see so many times, the team makes that run to pull even, and then suddenly it all goes flat. The Chevrolet most valuable players of the game, Todd Bergen, closing out his career here with a double-double, 20 points, 10 rebounds, same numbers he had against New Mexico. And Elton Brand from Duke, 20 points and a career high, 14 rebounds. Well, you can almost give the MVP to the Duke freshman class here tonight because that's what put them over the top. And if you're Jim Beheim, no loss one is one that you like to have. But when you think back, Jim, he's been eliminated three times in the NCAA tournament. 92 by Massachusetts in overtime. 94 by Missouri in overtime. 95 by Arkansas in overtime. And remember how that one even got to overtime. That was the famous Lawrence Moten play calling the fifth timeout. Actually, the sixth timeout. So three overtime losses in NCAA tournament play. This one, uh, no easier to take, but those had to really be anguishing. They came back to beat Georgia in the 96 tournament in overtime on their way to the championship game, and they haven't lost an overtime game since. They've won five, five straight. straight. Yeah. We would have given the freshman the Chevy MVP, but they're not old enough to drive. <laughs> The freshman, 45 points, 45 of the Duke 78 total. They can't even get the three off. They've got to, if they're going to drive, they ought to fire that ball back out. Two's going to help them here. Griffin, a good looking player. Freshman from Syracuse. 78 65. Duke on to the Elite Eight. Quite a record, too, as a number one seed. We talked about it earlier, Billy. Only the third time. That's surprising with all those final four trips. The Duke's been a number one seed. 86 when they lost in the finals to Louisville. And 92, which we saw a moment ago when they won the championship against Michigan up in Minneapolis. This is just the third time they've garnered a number one seed. So they'll be 14-1 and one now playing as a number one seed. The only loss was the Louisville the win in the final, 86. So Duke with the game well in hand now, 78-65, their lead over Syracuse. And Duke continues their amazing run in regional semifinal games. This victory will improve their record to 14-1. and 